This happened to me on October 6, 2010. You ever spend too long alone and start to hear your own name whispered in the wind? That's where things started to go sideways for me. Name's Cal. Cal Weaver. I've been living out in the Adirondacks for close to 15 years now. Picked up the land cheap after my divorce left me with nothing but a truckload of tools and a need to get away from, well, people. Built myself a cabin, got a few solar panels, one of those satellite internet boxes. Modern off-grid, I guess you'd call it. I hunt, I fish, I fix up old motorcycles when I can get parts. It's a simple sort of life, but I like it. Or I liked it. Before. It started with the whispers. At first, I chalked it up to isolation playing tricks on my mind. Maybe it was the wind sighing through the pines in just the right way. But that voice kept getting clearer. Sounded like my name. Cal. Cal. Raspy and faint. Right on the edge of hearing. That's when the other stuff started happening. Little things, but unsettling. My tools would go missing, then turn up in odd places. Halfway down the trail, on the roof of the shed, places I wouldn't leave them. My fishing lines would get tangled in impossible knots. Once... I swore I saw my empty chair rocking on the porch when I came in from the woods. Thought I was going nuts. Old man losing his grip. Then came the noises. Scraping sounds at night. Like something dragging along the cabin walls. Heavy thumps on the roof that sent my heart pounding. And that smell. Musky. Rank. Like rotting meat left out in the sun. I tried to convince myself it was just an animal. Maybe a fisher cat had gotten into the woodshed. But it lingered too long. Too strong. One morning I went out to the garden and found chaos. Bean vines ripped up. Tomatoes stomped to mush. And in the center of it all, a footprint. Wasn't human. Too big for that. And the wrong shape with long, splayed toes ending in ragged claws. Panic set in then. I wasn't dealing with a critter. I was dealing with something else. I started making preparations. Boarded up the lower windows of the cabin, reinforced the doors, cleaned and loaded my old hunting rifle, the one I never thought I'd need to use on something more dangerous than a bear. That nagging voice was a near constant whisper now, carrying on the wind or seeping through the walls. Sometimes I'd hear a soft chuckle right outside my window making my skin crawl. Then, a few nights later, I saw it for the first time. I was up late, the whispering louder than ever. Glanced out the window, and there it was, silhouetted against the moonlight. It stood on two legs, tall and rangy, but hunched forward like an ape. Its skin looked hairless, stretched tight over bulging muscles. The head... God, the head was the worst... Long and narrow, with a jaw that jutted out unnaturally, full of crooked teeth glistening in the moonlight. And the eyes, empty black pits reflecting the light, fixed on my cabin, like the eyes of a damned shark. It watched me for what felt like hours, then melted back into the trees with a speed that defied its clumsy build. The next morning, I found more of those clawed footprints circling the cabin, Whatever it was, it was testing me, toying with me like a cat with a mouse. The next few days were a blur of fear and adrenaline. I barely slept, barricaded in my cabin with the rifle loaded and at hand. The whispering turned into snarls and grunts outside my door. It began to ram the walls, trying to force its way in. Then, it got smart. It cut my power line, plunging the house into darkness. I waited... Rifle at the ready, listening to the snuffling breaths beyond my door. It tried one window, then the next, the wood creaking under its assault. But the bars held. After a while, it fell silent. Relief washed over me, then dread. This wasn't over. It was just changing tactics. Now, it was a waiting game. In the morning, I ventured out cautiously. The air was thick with that rotten meat smell almost overpowering. And there, at the edge of the woods, 
it had left a message. A deer carcass, gutted and skinned, hanging from a branch, a grotesque mockery of my own hunting trophies. That's when I knew I couldn't stay. I packed what I could carry, grabbed the rifle, and just ran. I ran through the woods, not caring where I was going, just away from that cabin, away from that thing. I kept hearing rustling behind me, the whisper of my name on the breeze, but I never looked back. Made it to the nearest road after a day and a half, flagged down a passing truck. The trucker thought I was some kind of escaped lunatic. Maybe I was. Called the police, told them my story. They sent some officers out to the cabin, but they didn't find any sign of forced entry, no animal tracks, nothing. Put it down to a hermit losing his mind in the woods. Let me tell you, being told you're crazy is almost worse than being stalked by a monster. It's been years now. I live in a cramped apartment in Albany, the noise of the city a constant drone that drowns out the whispers. I work at a warehouse, keep my head down. Never been back to those woods, never will. But sometimes, late at night, I smell that rotting stench creeping in under my windows, carried by the city breeze, and I hear a faint, raspy voice carried on the wind. Cal? Cal? Some folks, they hear my story and call it a case of wilderness psychosis, or maybe a bear acting peculiar. Some believe in Bigfoot, say it must have been one of those. Me? I don't try to put a name to it anymore. The world's bigger and wilder than we think, and there's things in the dark corners most of us are lucky enough never to see. The locals up in those mountains, they have a name for it. In hushed tones. The rake, they call it. Whatever it is, I pray I never see it again. This happened to me on July 4th, 1999. I still remember the fireworks crackling overhead, folks laughing at the campground down the ridge. Me? I never much cared for big crowds. That's the whole reason I moved out here, up into the Ozarks. Figured a man could find peace, solitude. That's why I built this cabin with my own two hands. I'm Jared, by the way. Been living this way ten years now. Got myself a little garden, rainwater catchment, Solar panels for when I need them. I go into town once a month, stock up on the essentials. Other than that, it's just me and the trees. Well, until that night. There'd been weird things happening for a while. Supplies going missing. Strange noises I couldn't place. At first, I chalked it up to a mountain lion or some other critter. But then one morning, I found footprints. Big ones. Size of a dinner plate but the shape. It wasn't like any animal I recognized. The toes, there were only four of them, and they were long and crooked-like. That's when I started getting the prickling at the back of my neck. That feeling like I wasn't alone out here anymore. July 4th comes around. Town down the mountain is shooting off those blasted fireworks. I'm hunkered down, trying to ignore the racket when I hear it. A sort of crunching sound, like heavy footsteps on the dry leaves circling my cabin. I froze. My heart pounded so loud I thought whatever was out there would hear it. I had my old man's rifle within reach, a Winchester, handed down through generations. I eased it up, finger on the trigger, and peered out a window. The fireworks cast strange, flickering shadows. But there, clear as anything between the trees was a massive figure. It moved hunched over, those long clawed feet padding softly in the dirt. Hard to make out every detail, but the thing was huge, well over seven feet tall. Its skin looked thick and leathery. The head seemed too small for the body, long and pointed with these glowing yellow eyes. It circled my cabin like a wolf sniffing out its prey. A low growl echoed through the night rumbling up from its chest. I'd never heard anything like it. This wasn't any mountain lion. This was something else. Something unnatural. I spent that night pressed against the wall, rifle ready, 
the sweat dripping off me. Every creak, every rustle of leaves had me jumping. But the creature didn't attack. Morning came, the fireworks long silent, and I crept outside. I could see its tracks all around my place, and the gouges in a tree trunk where it sharpened its claws. Whatever it was, it had been watching me. Now some folks might have packed up and left. But this is my land, the cabin I built. I wasn't about to be chased out by some... some beast. I patched up the damage and doubled down on my defenses. Sharpened stakes, dug trenches, turned my home into a fortress. Life became a waiting game. The creature seemed to be biding its time. I caught glimpses of it in the woods, the eyes always watching. At night, I'd hear the growls, sometimes so close it felt like the thing was right outside my door. The fear gnawed at me. It wasn't just the threat, it was the not knowing. What the hell was it? Why me? The breaking point came a few weeks later. I was in town stocking up when I ran into old man Tucker at the general store. Tucker was a gossip, but he had a good heart. I ended up telling him, some of it at least. Couldn't bring myself to spill the craziest stuff. Tucker listened, scratched his beard, then his eyes went wide. Jared, he whispered. I think I know what you've seen out there. He told me stories, handed down from his grandpappy's time. Stories about creatures living deep in the hills. Ancient things, best left alone. Folks used to call it the Howling Man. Some even said it wasn't an animal at all, maybe a demon. Well, I always thought those were just tall tales. But sitting there in that cluttered store, Tucker's voice low and urgent, I felt the chill settle in my bones. When I got back to my cabin that night, it felt different. Empty. I knew I wasn't alone anymore. Days turned into weeks. I hardly slept. The pressure was crushing. One morning I woke up and something had snapped inside of me. I took down my Winchester, loaded it, and walked into the woods. Wasn't about hunting the thing. I knew that was a fool's errand. But I couldn't live like that anymore, waiting for the axe to fall. I tracked the creature for hours. I found scat, torn up animal carcasses, signs it was close. Each track sent a shiver down my spine. The woods felt oppressive like the air itself was holding its breath. Finally, as the sun dipped below the trees, I saw it. The creature stood in a clearing, its back to me. It had something in its massive claws, a deer, freshly torn apart. The smell of blood made me gag. My legs started trembling, but a sort of cold fury washed over me. I raised the rifle, steadied my aim on its broad back. This was it. One way or another, this was going to end today. My finger tightened on the trigger, and then it turned. The yellow eyes locked onto me. It dropped the carcass, a guttural snarl vibrating through the trees. The creature charged, covering the distance with terrifying speed. I fired once, twice, but the bullet seemed to bounce right off its thick hide. Panic fueled me. I turned and ran, the trees a blur around me. I could hear it gaining, the thud of its feet like thunder. A fallen log tripped me up, sent me sprawling. Pain shot through my ankle. When I looked up, the thing was almost on top of me. I scrambled back, raised the rifle like a club. The creature swiped down with a gnarled claw, the blow glancing off the gun and sending it flying. Pain exploded across my chest, and I cried out as I was thrown against a tree, my vision blurring. The howling man loomed over me. Its mouth opened, revealing rows of razor-sharp teeth. I braced for the killing blow, but it didn't come. The creature tilted its long head, the yellow eyes narrowing as if it was studying me. Then, with a frustrated grunt, it turned and lumbered back into the woods, disappearing into the shadows. I lay there, gasping for air, my whole body on fire. I didn't know why the thing had spared me. Maybe I was just a disappointment as a meal, all skin and bones compared to a deer. Or maybe it had something crueler in mind. 
It took me hours to drag myself back to the cabin. My ankle was throbbing and my ribs felt cracked. But I was alive. The howling man could have ended it, and it didn't. From then on, the game changed. The attacks became more frequent, more daring. One night, it ripped the door clean off its hinges, though I managed to drive it back with fire. Another morning, I found the mangled corpse of my neighbor's hunting dog on the edge of my property. A message, clear as day. Fear became my constant companion. I barely ate, barely slept. Every crack in the walls of my cabin felt like those yellow eyes watching me. I tried to reach out for help, but who would believe my tales of monsters in the night? They'd lock me up, thinking me mad. Weeks turned into months. The isolation, the endless stress, it was tearing me apart. I started talking to myself, just to hear a human voice. Some days I'd even find myself laughing at some half-forgotten joke. I knew I was slipping away. One morning, a Tuesday I think, though the days had no meaning anymore, I woke up to silence. Not even the birds were singing. Something was wrong. I crept to the window, heart pounding. The clearing around my cabin was littered with bodies. Torn limbs, shattered bones, so much blood soaking the earth. A cold horror swept through me. These weren't animals. Hikers, I realized with a sick dread. Maybe a family lost on a trail. And there, amidst the carnage, stood the howling man. It was feasting. I watched in revulsion as it tore into the remains, its yellow eyes gleaming with a terrible satisfaction. That was it. The final straw. All those months, I'd clung to some shred of hope, a fool's belief that I could just wait it out. I couldn't anymore. This, this thing wasn't just hunting me. It was enjoying it. It was going to keep killing until I stopped it, or it stopped me. I went down to my shed and pulled out the old gas cans. There had to be a better way to fight fire than my measly torch. When night fell, I soaked the ground around the cabin, the walls, everything. I rigged up a contraption with a long string leading inside. All it needed was a spark. Then I sat and waited. The creature came, drawn by the scent of blood. It circled my home, let out a roar that made the windows rattle. I gripped the string, my hand shaking. This was suicide, plain and simple. But it was the only choice I had left. With a sob that turned into a battle cry, I yanked the string. The fuse caught, and the world erupted in flames. The cabin went up like a tinderbox. The howling man screamed, a sound I'll hear in my nightmares until the day I die. It thrashed around engulfed in the inferno. I stumbled out, coughing and choking on the smoke, my skin blistering from the heat. I collapsed on the edge of the clearing and watched. The flames roared, consuming my home, my sanctuary, everything I had. And from within that blazing hell, the creature's screams echoed until finally, mercifully, they stopped. The aftermath was a blur. The fire spread took out a chunk of the woods before the rangers managed to contain it. I was found half delirious, mumbling about monsters. They airlifted me to a hospital. Severe burns, smoke inhalation, and a fractured ankle. The doctors patched me up as best they could, even gave me something for the nightmares, but some wounds don't heal so easily. The official story is that I started the fire myself. Accident, they said maybe sparked by faulty wiring. Or they hinted at mental illness brought on by the isolation. They looked at me with pity in their eyes, those city folk doctors. They didn't understand. Sometimes the real monsters aren't the ones in your nightmares. Sometimes they're the ones telling you it was all just in your head. This happened to me on July 4th, 1991. Took a wrong turn in life, wound up divorced, a rusty trailer my only home. Figured getting back to nature, off on my own, 
Might sort my head out. Name's Wyatt. Wyatt Reed. Found a piece of land on the cheap, tucked away in the Cascade Mountains of Washington State. Miles of thick pine forest, a glacial lake practically in my backyard, should have been paradise. First few months it was. Hiked the old logging roads, taught myself to fish, fixed up the old cabin on the property. Didn't see another living soul for weeks at a time, and I wasn't complaining. Turns out, solitude can be addictive, especially when you're running from your problems. Then the noises started. Couldn't pinpoint when exactly. Just a gradual unease that settled into my bones. A rustle in the bushes that didn't sound like a deer or a raccoon. A sense of eyes on me, hot and heavy, when I ventured too far into the trees. Found the first tracks by the lake. They were massive, clawed, not anything I recognized. Tried to tell myself it was a deformed bear, maybe one injured in a fight. But deep down I didn't believe it. That night, I heard it for the first time. A howl so deep it rattled the cabin windows. Not a wolf, not a coyote. It was the sound of pure, hungry rage echoing through the valley. I barricaded the door, loaded my shotgun, and didn't sleep a wink. Days turned into a tense, watchful routine. I scanned the tree line constantly, every snap of a branch sending my heart into overdrive. I started finding things. Remnants of my woodpile scattered like a dog had torn through it. Deep gouges in the trees outside my cabin. And always, the feeling of being watched. One morning, I discovered the carcass of a doe near the creek. It had been half-eaten, stripped in a way no predator I knew would do. Next to the carcass was a single monstrous footprint sunk deep into the mud. That's when I knew something unnatural was stalking me. I debated leaving, but a stubborn part of me refused. This was my land, damn it, and I wasn't about to be chased off it by some... some monster, packed up supplies, retreated deeper into the woods, figured if it wanted to hunt me, it would have to find me first. I holed up in an abandoned prospector's shack half a day's hike from my cabin. The structure was ramshackle but sturdy, I boarded up the windows, reinforced the door, laid traps around the perimeter, and waited. It came on the third night. I heard it circling the shack, its snarls low and guttural. The scratching of claws against the weathered wood sent shivers down my spine. I sat huddled in a corner, shotgun clutched in my sweating hands, whispering prayers I hadn't uttered since childhood. The attack came at dawn. It slammed into the shack, the wood groaning and splintering. I fired the shotgun through a gap in the boards, the roar deafening in the confined space. I heard a yelp of pain, then silence. I held my breath, listening. Had I hit it? Wounded it? Scared it off? Then the roof started to tear off. I fired again, blindly. I heard the thud of something massive hitting the ground followed by a furious roar. Fumbled in the dark to reload, hot tears streaming down my face. This was it. This was how I died. Suddenly, I heard shouting, men's voices rough and unfamiliar. More gunshots echoed, then a series of inhuman howls retreating into the trees. When the sun rose, I stumbled out of the wrecked shack into blinding daylight. Three men stood there, park rangers or game wardens I guessed from the uniforms. They looked at me, then at the shack, and back at me, like they couldn't believe their eyes. What the hell happened here? One of them asked, his voice tinged with awe and a little fear. I just shook my head. Couldn't find the words to describe the creature I'd seen glimpses of in the dim light. Its hunched form, its glowing eyes, the sheer power it moved with. They found the creature half a mile away, dead. It was enormous, like a bear that walked on two legs. Its fur was patchy, its face twisted into a hideous snarl. One of the rangers swore, hand going to the cross around his neck. 
Skinwalker, he whispered, and there was a reverence in his voice I couldn't place. They questioned me for hours. I told them the truth, or as close to it as I could manage. They didn't believe in monsters, not really. Chalked it up to a bear attack, a rogue with some kind of disease. Didn't matter to me what they thought. I knew what I saw. Packed up what I could salvage and hitched a ride back to civilization the next day. Never looked back. Turns out there's some kinds of wilderness a man's not meant to face alone. Some things the city's safer for, even with all its noise and crowds. Don't get me wrong, I still miss the quiet, the freedom of the woods. But at night, when I hear a siren wail, or the rumble of a distant train, I remember that howl, those glowing eyes in the darkness. And I offer up a silent thanks for concrete, streetlights, and the company of strangers. This happened to me on February 26th, 2016. Found myself in the kind of tight spot only a fool with empty pockets gets into. Gambling debts, shady characters, the usual mess. Figured the best way to make those problems disappear was to do the same myself. Always loved the wilderness, so I bought a chunk of land, sight unseen up in the Adirondacks. Figured I could live out my days hunting, fishing, far from anyone who wanted a piece of me. They don't call me lucky for nothing. First few months were a dream. Fixed up the old cabin, learned how to set snares, track deer, even got myself a rusty old boat for the lake. The isolation was the best part. A man can think straight when it's just him and the trees. No distractions. Well, except for that first winter. It hit early and hard. Blizzards, ice, the whole nine yards took longer than I care to admit to realize I was woefully unprepared. When the woodpile started dwindling, my stomach did too. Figured the storm would let up, I could hike into town for supplies, but the snow just kept coming. Food ran out. Cabin started to feel like a tomb. Got desperate. Strung fishing line across a creek. Rigged a pathetic little ice fishing setup. Didn't expect much. Caught something, though. Problem was... It wasn't a fish. Pulled this... thing up through the hole in the ice. Skinny as a bone, skin tight like shrink wrap. Fur looked half rotten, what patches there were. But the eyes, they blazed green, full of a wild, unnatural hunger. It hissed and writhed on the line, teeth like needles. I whacked it with a log, cut the line, and watched it slink back into the freezing water. Next time I left the cabin, I brought my rifle. Didn't like that what I saw had human-like hands, the way it moved on its haunches, the way it stared at me, calculating. That thing, it was more than just some sick animal. The tracks were what really got me. Found them all around the cabin, crisscrossing my own. Massive paw prints, but something was off, not quite the shape of any animal I recognized. And every now and then... The prince would switch from paws to something with fingers and toes, long, crooked things that sent a chill down my spine. Started dreaming about it. Nightmares about being hunted, chased through the trees. Woke up shaking, covered in sweat, my rifle clutched to my chest. Sleep became my enemy. Then, one day, I was out gathering firewood when I heard it. A low, rumbling growl from deeper in the woods. Saw a flash of movement between the trees. A hulking shape, mottled fur blending in with the shadows. It was watching me. I bolted back to the cabin, barricaded myself in. Heart hammered in my chest like it wanted to break out. That night, the creature came. I heard it circling the cabin, snarling and growling. The scratching at the door, heavy thuds against the walls. It went on for hours. Just before dawn, it let out a howl that made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. A howl full of fury, but also a promise. And then, it was gone. Next morning, I walked out into a world transformed. 
The tracks in the snow told the story. It had circled the cabin, marking its territory. My sanctuary was now my prison. Didn't have time to think. I packed everything I could carry and abandoned the cabin without a backward glance. Hiked for two days straight, barely stopping to rest. Hard in my throat the whole time. Figured, the further I got from that godforsaken place, the better my chances. Hitched a ride with a trucker hauling logs. Told him my truck broke down. Some story to cover up how rattled I looked. Made it to a bus station and disappeared into the city. Now, I stick to crowded streets and cheap motels. Call me paranoid. Call me crazy. But I know what I saw. The memory of that creature haunts me. Its twisted form. The hunger in its eyes. The feeling of being its prey. Every time I hear a siren wail, a dog bark, a rustle outside my window, some part of me remembers. Remembers that there are places in the world where a man ain't the top of the food chain. Places where old things still walk the earth. Things best left undisturbed. I learned my lesson, though it was a high price to pay. Nature ain't always pretty. Sometimes, she's got teeth and claws and a gaze that'll freeze your soul. Sometimes, the smartest play a man can make is to run and never look back. Maybe those debts weren't so bad after all. Maybe it's best the fellas I owe can't find me. Because if that creature ever does, well, I don't like my odds. March 23rd, 2010. I was working some seasonal construction gig and finally saved enough to get that plot of land up in the Alaskan backcountry. Been dreaming of doing it proper since I was a kid, you know? Getting off the grid, living free. Name's Everett. Everett Barnes. Folks called me Ev, but out there, I was just me. First year was a rude awakening. I ain't ashamed to admit it. Thought I knew survival stuff. Camping trips, hunting with my old man in the backwoods of Michigan. Alaska? That was an entirely different beast. Winter came down like a hammer. My woodpile wasn't nearly big enough. Cabin was draftier than I thought. I nearly packed it in. Could have driven my beat-up truck back down south, swallowed my pride. But something in me kept going. Learned from my mistakes. Got resourceful. Second year was better third year even more so. By that fifth year, I felt like I finally got the hang of it. My garden was doing great. I'd set up a smokehouse, even made friends with a few folks from the nearest small town a half day's hike away. Life was simple, even lonely sometimes, but it was mine. Then the day came when everything changed. I was headed down to the river to check my fishing lines. It was still early spring, the meltwater high and fast. Figured the trout might be biting. I'd gotten careless. No gun. Not even a big knife, since it was such a familiar route. My first mistake. Heard a sound that set my teeth on edge. Kind of a chittering, like nothing I'd encountered before. Then a low growl echoed through the trees, deeper than a bear. That's when the smell hit me. A sickly, rotten kind of stink that made me gag. I didn't wait around to find out what made it. I took off running, heart pounding so loud, I was afraid it would give me away. Tripped over a root, slammed my knee on a rock. Didn't matter. I scrambled up, tasting blood in my mouth. Kept glancing over my shoulder, expecting... something. Problem was, I still had no idea what I was running from busted through the trees onto the riverbank and froze. My fishing line wasn't just caught, it had been shredded. And something left a trophy. Laid out across a flat rock was the head of a buck. I recognized it. Belonged to a deer that had been hanging around my cabin. Its eyes stared wide and empty. But the head, it was mostly clean of flesh. Like something gnawed the meat down to the bone. Suddenly, a rustle from upstream. I turned just in time to see it. Crouched on a boulder, 
hunched like it was made of too many angles. Tall, at least eight feet, with scrawny limbs that ended in long yellowish claws. Its skin was leathery and dark like tree bark, and the head, it was the stuff of nightmares. Kind of like a wolf, but twisted all wrong, the snout too long and the teeth too sharp, like rows of razors. The creature stared at me with eyes that glowed a sickly yellow. It let out a hissing snarl, then sprang. I barely had time to dive into the river. The icy water shocked the breath out of me, but it didn't slow that. That thing down. It crashed into the shallows, the water churning. I swam, frantic, the current helping and hindering me all at once. I expected a swipe of claws, the sudden pain of being dragged under. But nothing came. I risked a look over my shoulder. That creature was on the bank, pacing. It howled, the sound echoing off the hillsides, and then it vanished, back into the forest. It took me hours to find my way back to the cabin. I stumbled in, bolted the door, and collapsed onto my bed, shivering even with blankets piled on top of me. Next morning, I surveyed the damage. Footprints circled the cabin, big as dinner plates, the clawed toes deeply imprinted in the mud. No way an animal I knew could leave tracks like that. I also found a trail of thick brownish blood leading away into the woods. Seemed at least I managed to wound the thing. I cleaned up as best I could, then packed a bag. There was no way I was staying. Whatever that creature was, I didn't want another round with it. I left behind most of my stuff, years of work. Didn't care. I hiked out of there like a bat out of hell. Never looked back. When I finally got to town, I found a bar and drank until I couldn't see straight. Some guys overheard me ranting about a monster in the woods laughed at me, called me crazy. I let them. Got some odd jobs, saved up enough to get as far away from Alaska as possible. Found myself down near the Florida swamps of all places. Figured if anything wanted to eat me alive, at least the gators would be familiar company. Still see that creature in my nightmares, though. Hear it snarls, smell that rotten stink. People tell me to put it behind me, like it was some bad dream. But I know what I saw. They even have a name for it, those who believe the Adlet. Some Inuit legend about a shape-shifting beast with a hunger for human flesh. Maybe I'm crazy now. Maybe I was always crazy enough to think I could take on the Alaskan wilderness alone. All I know is this. There are things in this world that don't fit into neat little nature documentaries. Things that remind you that even when you think you're the hunter, you might just be the prey. November 8th, 1991. Folks up here call me Hayes, Hayes Griffin. I've been working these mountains trapping and logging since I was old enough to hold an axe. I know the backwoods around the boundary waters like the back of my hand. Or so I thought. Thing is, there are places out there where maps don't mean much, and a man's knowledge can turn against him. Pride can get you killed out here. This was back when I was trapping mostly beaver and muskrat. Had a line I ran deep in the woods, old cabins marking the spots to check. Wasn't a bad life, if a solitary one. One morning, mid-season, I was heading to the farthest cabin. The one folks said was haunted, but nobody I knew had ever seen proof. I figured it was drifters and moonshiners, using it on the sly so I kept extra alert should have listened to that prickling at the back of my neck. Wasn't long into the hike when I caught the smell. Now, I've dealt with gut piles, skunks, all the stink nature can throw at you. This was... wrong. Like something rotten, left in the sun too long, with a chemical sweetness underneath that made me want to puke. Figured it must be a dead deer somewhere off trail. Happens sometimes. Predator gets it, but doesn't finish the meal. Kept going, rifle gripped tight, the smell growing stronger. Then, I rounded a bend, and there it was, right in the middle of the path. The deer carcass, or what was left of it. 
mangled, half the meat torn away, bones splintered. The fur around the wounds was blackened, like it had been burned. Didn't make sense. Coyote pack, maybe, if they were starving, but even they don't leave a mess like this. I circled wide, eyes on the tree line. That's when I saw the tracks. I grew up finding sign, knew my deer from my bear, wolf from dog. These prints, they weren't right. Bigger than my boot, but with only four toes. Claws looked long, maybe three inches. And the gait? It was off kilter, not like any animal I knew. That's when it hit me. That god-awful stench from before. It was all around me, only stronger. I didn't stick around to investigate. Checked my trap line, but couldn't shake the feeling I was being watched. Whatever left those tracks, it knew I was there. Back at the cabin that night, I heard it. A howl, longer and higher pitched than a wolf's. It echoed off the hillsides, making it seem like the sound was coming from every direction at once. Then came something else, something worse. A high-pitched screech, like a woman screaming in pain. I built up the fire, shotgun loaded with buckshot laid across my lap. Didn't sleep much. I told myself they were just sounds, tricks the wind plays in these old forests. But that smell, those tracks, they haunted my dreams all the same. Morning came, and I hiked back with the first light. Didn't want to stay another night. Had to pass that carcass again. It was gone. Not dragged off, gone. Like it had walked itself away, even half-eaten as it was. I ran the rest of that line, traps untouched. Never went back to that cabin, not even to pick up my gear. Some lines aren't worth running. Some places aren't worth the risk. I learned something out there. There are corners in these woods, dark corners, where the old stories might be true. The stories about things with too many teeth and eyes that glow like embers in the dark. Things that walk upright, but ain't human. I ran into a park ranger a few weeks later, on my way to new trapping grounds. Told him what I saw, about the carcass, the tracks. Figured it was worth reporting might be a new predator or something diseased. That ranger, he didn't laugh. Just got that grim look in his eye that old-timers around here sometimes get. Then said, Sounds like you had yourself a run-in with the dogman. Said there were sightings going back generations. Native legends, too. Said he didn't believe it. Not fully. But that he'd seen some things that made him wonder. I don't wonder anymore. I've seen proof that the world's a hair bigger and a lot darker than we think. I stick to logging now, working with crews, safer that way. Sometimes, though, I dream about that scream and the smell of rot. I wake up, look over to my old hunting dog curled up by the fire, and try to pretend he could protect me from the things that slip through the shadows, from the things that might have a name but are better left unspoken. October 10th, 2012. It started with a job. Figured it'd be an easy in and out. Mapping some old logging trails up in the Washington Cascades for a timber company. Get paid. Spend a few weeks in the woods. Sounded perfect to me. Name's Cole, by the way. Ex-Army. Did some wilderness training stuff after. Living off-grid ain't a hobby for me. It's a skill set. Landed myself a sweet little campsite by a creek. Real secluded first few days went smooth. Work was straightforward. The woods were the usual thick, rain-soaked Pacific Northwest tangle. Nights were quiet, except for the normal critter noises. But by the end of that first week, things started feeling... off. Wasn't anything obvious. More a prickling at the back of my neck. That gut instinct you get after too many patrols in bad territory. Then I found the elk. It was half-submerged in the creek not more than a hundred yards from my camp. Hide stripped clean off, the meat carved away like it had been butchered. Didn't see any tracks that made sense, 
not with the way the carcass was torn up. Figured maybe a cougar got lucky, dragged its kill somewhere safer. Still, I slept with my rifle close that night. Couple days later I was way off trail, marking a stand of old growth the company wanted surveyed. Found myself in a small clearing where something big had gone through. Branches snapped high up, the ground churned to mud. And there, in the prints, were these massive clawed footprints, definitely no bear or anything I recognized. The thing that made them was strong, heavy. I started backtracking, following the trail of destruction. That's when I heard it. The crack of a branch snapping, just ahead in the trees. I froze, rifle raised, but there was nothing to see in the thick undergrowth. The forest fell silent. Then, from somewhere behind me, came a low snarl that turned my blood cold. I turned, scanning the trees. That's when I saw it, crouched on a moss-covered boulder. Huge, looked like a mix of man and wolf, but twisted and wrong. Its skin was stretched tight over bone, almost translucent. Its eyes burned yellow in the dim light. We stared at each other, maybe ten seconds that felt like forever. My finger found the rifle's trigger, but something held me back. It wasn't just animal instinct. It was deeper. A primal dread that screamed at me. This ain't natural. The creature lunged, and I fired on instinct. I remember the roar of my rifle, the bark shattering from trees. The creature jerked, then vanished into the undergrowth. I stumbled back, breathing ragged, heart pounding like a drum solo. Didn't stop to think, just emptied the rifle in the direction I thought it had gone with a desperate yell. I knew then it wasn't over. Whatever that thing was, I'd pissed it off. Back at my camp, I packed up everything I could carry and booked it out of there. Didn't stop running until I found a road, flagged down a trucker who gave me a wide-eyed look but drove me to the nearest town. Called the job in sick, told the timber company to forget about me mapping those woods. Figured they'd write me off as some nature kook. Didn't care. Never went back to the Cascades. That snarl echoes in my head sometimes, especially at night. Folks say Bigfoot's a myth, an old wives' tale to scare kids. I saw something out there, something that ain't in any guidebook. And in those woods, deeper than maps show and darker than men go, I reckon the locals have a name for it. The Wendigo. Let me tell you, the aftermath wasn't pretty. Couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, jumped at every shadow. Nightmares plagued me. The creature's blazing eyes, the hunger in its snarl. Tried to tell people, but they looked at me like I was crazy. Drank myself stupid for a while trying to erase the memory. Didn't work. Eventually, I picked myself up, drifted from place to place. Never stay anywhere too long. Keep a rifle loaded, sleep with one eye open. I ain't the same guy who headed into those woods. Maybe that coal died back there in the clearing. Maybe the thing in the trees took a piece of me. But here's the thing about monsters. Once you know they're real, you can never go back to pretending they're not. Word gets around, even in the off-grid crowd. Met a guy in Montana last year, a Lakota elder at an off-season powwow. Heard my story and just nodded. Told me there are things in the deep places, old things with names only whispered around dying fires. We traded tobacco, shared a flask under the stars. He said, You saw a walker between worlds. Best you run and don't look back. Guess I'm still running. October 23, 1993 I always liked figuring out how things worked, so when my truck broke down halfway between nowhere and gone, the first thing I did was laugh. Guess living in a cabin out in the Alaskan wilderness meant getting used to fixing my own problems. My name's Silas, ex-mechanic, looking for some quiet after too many years spent under greasy hoods. Popped the hood, started poking around. Engine wasn't making the usual bad noises, which meant an electrical glitch somewhere. 
While tracing wires, I heard a crash, like something big moving through the trees. Figured it was a moose, not uncommon around these parts. Kept my head down, figuring it would wander off. Then I smelled it. A sharp metallic tang, mixed with something rotten, like a gut pile left out too long. The hairs on my neck stood up. Whatever it was, it wasn't a moose. I eased slowly away from the truck, keeping an eye on the tree line. That's when I saw it. Hunched between two pines, easily eight feet tall, covered in coarse dark fur with a matted mane running down its back. Its long arms seemed to drag on the ground as it moved, and its head sat low on its shoulders, snout too long and pointed. But it was the eyes that got me, yellow and slitted, gleaming with a cold intelligence. I stumbled backwards, tripping over a root. The creature let out a snarl like metal scraping metal and lunged. I scrambled to my feet, booked it towards the cabin, heart pounding so loud I was afraid the thing would hear it over my ragged breaths. I could hear it crashing through the undergrowth behind me, its snarls getting closer. My cabin wasn't much, one room, a wood stove, some basic supplies, but the door was solid, slammed it shut, threw the deadbolt and collapsed, gasping for air. Outside, I heard the creature slamming against the walls, the hinges groaning ominously. It circled the cabin for hours, the rasping of its claws against the wood a constant, grating torment. As the sun began to set, the noises finally subsided. I didn't risk moving until full daylight. Opening the door, I saw the damage. Walls scored deep. The window by the woodpile cracked. And in the muddy ground, footprints. Not human, not bare, but clawed and heavy. Too long for anything I recognized. I took a steadying breath and went to work. Boarded up the broken window, reinforced the hinges on the door. I left the deadbolt off. If the thing came back, I didn't want it trapped inside with me. That afternoon, I hiked out to my emergency supply cache, stashed a few miles away. Grabbed spare ammo, my old military-issue survival kit, and shouldered the heavy pack. The truck sat where I left it, the hood still up. I did a quick repair on the busted ignition wires, good enough to get it rolling, packed the essentials, and got the hell out of there. Stopped at the nearest town with a general store. Told the owner I'd been chased off by a brown bear. Needed some ammo for my rifle. He eyed me suspiciously, but sold me the shells. Locals around here are used to keeping to themselves. Maybe they've seen things too. Things they don't put a name to. Never went back to that cabin. Even now, truck engines don't rattle me the way the sound of claws on wood does. Sometimes out on the road when the shadows stretch long across the asphalt, I catch a whiff of that rotten meat smell, and a shiver runs down my spine. I look in the rearview mirror, half expecting to see a hulking shape, eyes gleaming in the twilight. I got a small trailer now, the kind you can tow behind a truck. Keep it packed and hitched up. I still take mechanic jobs for folks in remote towns, but I never stay too long. They call me a drifter, and I suppose they're right. But sleeping behind a different steering wheel every night feels a whole lot safer. Folks up here, some of the old-timers, they whisper stories of the Adlet, a creature from Inuit legends, a monstrous mix of man and wolf. Maybe that's what I saw. Maybe it has other names, in other places, other shadowed corners of the map. All I know is... Out there in the wild, lonesome places, there are things older than our names for them, with a hunger that doesn't care what we call them back. July 11, 2016. Figured getting away from the rat race and living off the land would be my salvation. Ex-cop, seen too many dark sides of humanity. Got myself a plot in the remote Ozark Mountains, built a cabin, learned the ways of the woods. Everyone called me Miller, never asked too many questions about my past. Summer went fine, 
hiked the hills, spent evenings on the porch watching the sunset, felt that peace I'd been craving start to seep back into me. Things changed come fall. First, it was the cattle on neighboring ranches going missing. Ripped apart, half-eaten, not like any predator I recognized. Then old Elias, a hermit who lived deeper in the hills, vanished. Folks started whispering about wild hog attacks, even panthers getting desperate with winter approaching. But I knew better. Had enough experience with crime scenes in my past life to recognize something else at work, something wrong. One crisp November morning, I found it. Tracks by the creek, bigger than any man's, with claws that looked longer than my damn fingers. That's when the nightmares started. Not just dreams, but waking visions. A flash of teeth, a hulking shape moving at unnatural speed through the trees. The feeling of being watched. I started sleeping with a loaded shotgun by my bed, feeling crazy and paranoid, but knowing deep down I wasn't imagining things. Then came the night I finally saw it, woke to branches snapping outside, the hair prickling on the back of my neck. The moon was bright, casting long shadows, and that's when I saw it hunched by the tree line. Too tall to be a bear, even standing on its hind legs, covered in ragged fur, with a face like a starved dog stretched long and twisted. But the eyes, those damn yellow eyes burned with a hungry light that could chill your soul. We locked eyes for a long, horrifying moment. Then it lunged. Before I could grab the shotgun, it smashed through my window, glass flying everywhere. I scrambled backwards, fumbling for the gun, but it was on me, knocking me to the ground. Its claws raked across my chest, tearing my shirt, leaving burning gashes on my skin. The smell hit me then, like rotting meat and something sulfurous underneath. Not animal, not human. I shoved it back with a desperate surge of adrenaline, rolled away, and managed to fire the shotgun. Buckshot tore into the thing's shoulder, and it let out a howl that split the night, a sound both animal and horribly brokenly human. It staggered back, then vanished into the trees, leaving a trail of dark blood. I patched myself up as best I could, then waited with shaking hands for dawn. By first light, I had my gear packed. Never even looked back at the cabin as I drove away. Figured that thing would track me eventually, and I wasn't sticking around to find out when. Got a construction job in the city. Hate the noise, the crowds, but I sleep on a ratty mattress on a grimy floor with a bolted door between me and the world. Every time I see a shadow move too fast out of the corner of my eye, my heart thuds. Every time I smell something rotten, that putrid stench from the woods comes flooding back. Some nights, I think I hear a scratching at the window and a ragged, howling cry that pierces through the traffic noise. Nobody believes me when I try to tell them what's out there. Maybe it's better that way. They say ignorance is bliss but some kinds of knowing scar you deeper than any wound. Folks up here have stories of Ozark howlers, things that stalk the dark hollers and prey on the lost and the weak. I don't know what that thing was. Don't even want to think about it too much. All I know is I survived, and some aren't so lucky. This happened to me on July 23rd, 1993. It's burned into my brain like a brand. I live out in the Ozarks, always have, not many people around, which suits me fine. I hunt, fish, got a little garden out back, used to work construction in Branson, but I'm getting too old for that. Off the grid ain't glamorous, but a man makes do. My name's Hank, Hank Lowry. That day started like any other. Up before dawn, made some coffee, strong as it takes to wake the dead. Took my old hound Sadie out for a walk in the woods behind the house. We've done that same trail a thousand times. Sadie sniffs out squirrels. I check the snares I keep set. It's a routine. This day, though, something felt off. Air was thick, 
heavy. Sadie kept looking back at me, whining soft like she was worried. Figured she sensed a storm rolling in. Dogs do that. Should have listened to her. I've lived out here all my life, but the woods can still turn on you if you aren't careful. That's when I saw the first sign something wasn't right. Snare trap was twisted out of shape, wire snapped clean. Now I've seen animals do some damage, but this was unnatural. I called for Sadie, but she was gone. I started getting that prickly feeling on the back of my neck. Whatever did this was big. I went deeper into the trees, keeping my shotgun ready. The silence was worse than any noise. Usually the woods are full of sounds, rustling leaves, birds, the crick bubbling by. But that day, it was dead quiet, like even the crickets held their breath. Suddenly, I heard Sadie bark. It was a scared kind of bark. Found her at the edge of a ravine, cornered, growling at something just out of sight. Then, I heard a low snarl, not like any animal I knew. I crept closer, heart thumping so loud I thought it'd give me away. That's when I saw it. Crouched on its haunches, it was taller than me, even hunched over. Its body looked starved, skin clinging too tight to its bones, stretched over limbs that bent the wrong way. But the face, Lord help me, the face. It was like a dog's skull, stretched long with a jaw full of jagged teeth, dripping with something black and foul. But the eyes, those weren't animal eyes. They were filled with a cold hunger that sent chills down my spine. It lunged at Sadie. She yelped, tried to fight back, but the creature was too fast, too strong. It snatched her up like a doll, a sickening crunch snapping the air, and Sadie went limp. I don't know what came over me. Fury, stupidity, who can say? But I raised the shotgun and fired. The shot hit it square in the chest. But it just... twitched. Turned those empty black eyes on me and snarled again, dropping Sadie's broken body. I fired again, and it stumbled backward, a ragged hole in its side. But it didn't go down. Instead, it turned and vanished into the trees with unnatural speed. I stood there, shaking. Didn't even reload the gun. What was the point? I knew right then, ain't nothing made of flesh and blood taking down a beast like that. Left Sadie where she lay. Didn't want to touch her. Didn't want to see her up close. Made my way back to the cabin, feeling its eyes on my back the whole way. Locked myself in. Boarded up the windows. Didn't sleep a wink for a week straight. Heard it outside most nights, snarling and scratching at the walls. Sounded like it was trying to get in, trying to get to me. Then, just as sudden as it came, it was gone. Silence came back to the woods. I went out after a few days, shotgun in hand. There wasn't no sign of Sadie, or of that... thing. Found some deep gouges in the trees, and once... Once I thought I saw a bloody handprint on my shed, high up like whatever made it had just leapt straight onto the roof. Got out of there as quick as I could manage. Went and stayed with my sister in Springfield for a while. She kept saying it was probably a rabid coyote. I was overreacting. Maybe. But those eyes... I looked right into the devil's eyes that day. Folks called me crazy. Maybe I am. But I ain't been back to the woods since. Took up living in a trailer park. Can't stand being alone anymore. Hear noises in the night sometimes. Sometimes I swear I smell something rotten. Like death, clinging to my clothes. Figure it's all in my head. But sometimes, sometimes I look out my grimy little window, see the tree line, and wonder if it's out there waiting. Sometimes I start thinking about poor Sadie and how she didn't deserve to die like that. And that old cold fury starts to burn in me all over again. A couple of years back, some backpackers went missing out in those woods. They never found the bodies, just some ripped up tents and a lot of blood. The newspapers blamed it on a bear attack. Me, I know better. The locals, 
Well, they call it the skin taker sometimes. Some old legend, I guess. Whatever it is, I pray I never see it again. But I don't think that prayer will do me no good. Thing like that, once it sets its sights on you, you're marked till the day you die. 